Listening 3, PBIS 4222, Module 5, Following Oral Instructions. Module 5, this module talks about following oral instructions. The topics we'll be learn of Module 5 are Operating Appliances, Working with Spatial Geographical References, and understanding sequences of procedure. Module 5, Unit 1 Operating Appliances Module 5, Unit 1, Activity 1, Task 1.1 The Portable Gas Cooking Table Part 1 Number 1 is the body case. Number 2 is the canister cover. Number three is the canister cover handle. Number four is the windscreen. Number five is the pan supporter. Number six is the burner head. Number seven is the ignition knob. Number eight is the canister lever. Number nine is the panel. Number 10 is the drip pan. Number 11 is the air control lever. Number 12 is the rubber leg. Module 5, Unit 1, Activity 1, Task 1.2 The Portable Gas Cooking Table, Part 2 To install the fuel canister, pull the canister cover to left side and lift it up to install fuel canister. Make sure the ignition knob is in off position and canister lever is in release or up position. If the ignition knob is not completely in the off position, fuel canister cannot be engaged into lock position. Don't forget to align the fuel canister so that the notch in the collar lines up with the value tab. Then close the canister cover. Push down the canister lever to the lock position if the canister is not positioned correctly. A hissing sound will indicate a gas leakage. After checking that the canister is positioned properly and the lever is in the lock position, you are now able to ignite the gas cooker. To ignite it, Rotate the ignition knob in a counterclockwise direction until you hear a distinct click sound. The sound indicates that a spark has been generated and the burner should now be ignited. If the burner does not light, repeat the ignition procedure. To regulate the flame, move the air control lever toward the open or closed position. This regulates the amount of air mixing with the fuel. Too much air mixed with the fuel will cause a yellow flame, which indicates incomplete burning. A blue flame indicates a more complete burning. Moving the lever towards the open position increases the air supplied to the fuel. When moved towards the closed position, the air supply is reduced. Module 5, Unit 1, Activity 1, Task 1.3, The Portable Gas Cooking Table, Part 3. To put out the flame, turn the ignition knob lockwise to the off position. The flame is automatically put out and there is no gas supply. Normally, the flame will extinguish before the ignition knob is turned completely to the off position with the canister level now in the release position. Some gas may remain in the burner tube after the unit has been turned off. For your own safety, with the canister level in release position, return ignition knob to on position to burn off any remaining fuel. Module 5, Unit 1, Activity 2 Task 2.1, Task 2.2, and Task 2.3. Learning how to use a washing machine. Okay, 
The washing machine. Look, it's next to the fridge here. Yes. Uh, have you used one like this before? Yes, I have. Okay, now, what do you need to know? Let's see. Hmm. Obviously, you put the clothes in here, in this compartment here. In here. And you open the door. Yes. Yes. One thing to remember about this machine, when you close the door, you have to close it quite firmly. Mm hmm. Because it's stiff. Ah, oh, it's stiff. Yes. Okay. Mm hmm. Uh, what else? The powder. You need to put the washing powder. Mm hmm. In this drawer here. So. Mm hmm. Uh, which compartment do I have to put it in? Uh, put it in the middle one. Mm hmm. In the middle. How much? How much washing powder do I need? About a cupful. Mm hmm. Okay. Yes. So close up the drawer. That's fine. Mm hmm. Uh, what other dials have we got here? The dial on the end here. Yes. Is the program setter? Woohoo! Okay. Usually, if you're washing white clothes, mm -hmm. you set this dial to number two. Right. Okay. Yes. Is there anything else you need to know? Or uh, what about temperature? Ah, yes. You can vary the temperature on this one too. Um, if you're washing woolens. You turn the temperature dial right down to minimum. All round, hmm. Mm hmm. And of course, if you're washing things like towels, mm hmm, or white sheets, turn it up to maximum. Maximum is very hot. Yes. Ah, yes. Okay. Uh, is there anything else? And then I have to turn on. Turn on here. Mm hmm. That's it, and the right light comes on. Ah, I see. And or uh, turn it on at the wall. Yes, obviously. Yes. It's over there. Mm hmm. Just behind the fridge, you can see the switch. Yes. Turn it on there. Uh huh. And how long does it take? Module five, unit one. Activity three, task three point one, and task three point two. Programming the video, part one. Okay, now this is the instruction booklet. Uh, it tells you everything you need to know about how to operate the machine. Yes, fine, thank you. But I wonder if you could just go through it. I mean, can you just show me how to record a program? I'm one of those people who, well, I understand things much better when someone actually shows me what to do, what button I have to press, and so on. You know. Yes, of course. Well, all the buttons are here, behind this panel, this little plastic door. So you have to open the panel, and the first thing you have to do is check two things. Uh, first, you have to ask. Is the machine switch on? You press the operate switch to switch it on. The second thing is, is there a tape in it? Here's a tape. Uh, actually, I'll give you this one with the machine. Here they are. Thanks. Are they expensive? These tapes? Uh, not really. No. You can get a very good for hour tape for less than ten pounds. Now. Put the tape in here, okay? Now you're ready. The machine switch on, and there is a tape inside. Now, when the TV program starts, you just press these two button. First, the record button, and then the play button. And when the program's finish, just press this one, the stop button. Fine. Now, what about programming the machine? You know, to um, or To record a program while I'm out. Module five, unit one, activity four, 
task 4.1 and task 4.2. Programming the video part 2. You know to, uh, to record a program while I'm out? Yes, of course. Well, if you want to record a program while you are out, you have a program the machine. All right, how do I do that? Is it difficult, complicated, I mean? Not at all. It's really very simple and straightforward. First, you have to make sure the machine is switched on. The operate switch. Operate switch. And also don't forget to put a tape in. Then you press the program button. The program button? Yes, this one here. Now these little numbers which are flashing. They are the machine's memory positions. You see, you can program this machine to record four things over two weeks. Now, you want number one. Because this is the first thing we are going to program. So you have to press the set button once. Then you have to press the store button. That keeps in it the machine's memory. It stores it. Yeah. Now you can see the channel numbers are flashing. Let's say the program we want to record is going to be on channel 4. You have to press the set button again four times. Two, three, four. That's it. Now press store again so that it's in the memory. Now the clock's flashing. That's right. Now we have the program, the day and time. Let's say the program we want is on Wednesday. You have to press the set button again until you see Wednesday in the display. There. Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Now, press Store again, and it's in the memory. Module 5, Unit 1, Activity 4, Task 4.3 Module 5, Unit 1, Task 4.3 Programming the Video, Part 3 So, We've got the channel, channel 4, and the day, Wednesday. Now you see clocks still flashing, so we can program the start and finish times. You have to press and hold the set button until the clock shows the time you want. Let's say your program starts at 8 o'clock. 6, 7, 8. That's it. Don't forget to press the store button again. Okay, and if the program finishes at, say, 9 o'clock? Then you have to press the set button again until you see 9 o'clock in the clock. Then press store once more. So that's just about it, really. Simple enough. The machine is programmed to record on channel 4 on Wednesday from 8 till 9. It's quite straightforward, really, isn't it? I mean, you just have to press set and store, basically. More or less, yeah. What happens if I make a mistake? I mean, what happens if I set the machine to record at 8 o'clock, but I really want it at 7 o'clock? How do I change it if I already press store just press this button reset yes and then just start programming from the beginning again do the formative test module 5 formative test 1 the electric rice cooker this is what you have to do to operate an electric rice cooker be sure to set the voltage selector according to the voltage supply. Then measure and the rise. The volume of the measuring cup is about 0.18 liters. Measure it accurately.
The thing you have to do is to wash the rice. Do not wash the rice in the inner part, but in a separate vessel. If you wash rice in the inner part, its bottom may be deformed. Rice may not be boiled evenly. If ten cups full of rice is to be boiled, put the rice in the inner part and put water in it until the water level reaches ten on the scale. The number on the scale as standard, and use these as a general guide and adjust the quality of water according to your tastes. If the quantity of rice to be boiled is less than an indicated minimum amount of rice to be cooked, or if the quantity of water is larger than is indicated by the corresponding number on the scale. The water in the inner pot may boil over, and the rice cooker and the floor will be soiled. Now wipe off moisture and rice grains from the side surface of the inner pot, particularly from the bottom surface. Make sure that the hot plate is clean, and then put the inner pot in the body of the rice cooker. Then lightly turn the inner pot to right and left, and make sure that it is put on the hot plate properly. Now insert the plug into the respected plug of the rice cooker. Then insert the other plug into the electric wall outlet. The warmer is switched on, and the pilot lamp warm is lit. Depress the switch button surely, and the pilot lamp cook is lit. If washed rice is put in the inner pot and left in it, as it is for a long time, with the warmer switch on, the rice is in the inner pot may change in quality. Therefore, insert the plug into an electric wall outlet just when you start cooking rice. When the cooking is over, the switch button rises automatically, and the warmer is turned on. As the automatic warmer is on, the pilot lamp warm is lit. After the switch is turned off, do not remove the lid for fifteen minutes, but leave it as it is to allow the boiled rice to settle by its own heat. After the teaming of boiled rice is over, fluff up the boiled rice to release the steam. Pull out the plug from the electric wall outlet, and also pull out the plug from the respective plug in the rice cooker. In this case, never fail to grip the plug and pull it. Do not pull the cord. Module five, unit two. Working with special. Geographical references. Module five, unit two, activity five, task five. Saks Fifth Avenue. Look at the map of the store. On the top, it says Saks Fifth Avenue, men's department. Now look at the bottom of the store map. On the bottom, five elevators. On the bottom, find elevators one, two, and three. Put your finger on elevator number two. Elevator two. Mister Smith got out of elevator number two. He said to the elevator man, "Where are the ties?" The elevator man said, "Turn to the left. Walk all the way to the back of the store." The ties are on counter number one. Right ties on counter number one. Next, Mister Johnson got out of elevator number two, and he said, "Where are the hats?" The elevator man said, "Walk straight ahead, sir, to the back of the store. Hats are on counter number four." Right hats on counter number four. Then Mister Brown got out of elevator number two and said, "Where are the bathrobes?" 
the elevator man said. Walk straight ahead, sir. The bathrobes are on the middle left counter. The bathrobes are on the middle left counter. Right bathrobes. Mrs. Williams got out of elevator number two. She said, Where are the pajamas? The elevator man replied, Stride ahead. Pajamas are on the middle right counter. The middle right counter. Right pajamas. Mrs. Miller got out of elevator number three. Number three, she said. Where are the sweaters? The elevator man replied, The first counter to your right, madam. First counter to your right, right sweaters. Then Mr. Jones got out of elevator number one. Number one, he asked for the underwear. He was told, First counter on your left, underwear on the first counter to your left, right underwear. In a few minutes, Mr. Davis got out of elevator number three. He asked for shoes. He was told, Shoes are on the right, clear to the back of the store. Shoes on the right, all the way to the back of the store. Right shoes. Mr. Anderson got out of elevator number one and wanted to know where he could find jewelry. He was told the jewelry counter is on the left, between underwear and ties. The jewelry counter is on the left, between underwear and ties. Right jewelry. A little while later, Mr. Wilson got out of elevator number three. He wanted suits. He was told suits were on the right, next to the shoe department. On the right, next to the shoe department. Right suits. Just before closing time, Mrs. Taylor got out of elevator number three. She wanted to find a top coat for her husband. The elevator man told her, Second counter to your top coats. It's the department between sweaters and suits. Second counter to your right, right top coats. Last, just before the store closed, Mr. and Mrs. Thomas got out of elevator number two. He wanted a spot jacket and she wanted a shirt. The elevator man told them that spot jackets were just to the right of the elevator, just to the right of the elevator, and that shirts were just to the left of the elevator. Right, sports jackets and shirts. Module 5, Unit 2, Activity 6, Task 6, Super X Grocery. Look at the diagram. Most supermarkets are divided in much the same way. Number 1 to the left of the page is the door. Find number 2. Number 2 is a place at the front of the store where the baskets and carts for groceries are kept. Find number two. Next, find number three. The square marked number three are checkout stands. Find the X. Put your finger on the X. We look at different food counters beginning from this X position. Repeat. Find the X position. Put your finger on the X. We'll look at different food counters beginning from this X position. First of all, let's locate diary products. Diary products are clear to the back of the store, in the center. Write diary products on counter 7. Next, the mid counter is along the extreme left side of the store. Along the extreme left side of the store 
is the meat counter. Right meat. Produce is along the extreme right of the store. Produce extreme right. Right produce. Next, ice cream is at the back of the store. Clear to the right. Ice cream is at the back of the store. Clear to the right. Right ice cream. Next, cookies, cakes, and bakery goods clear to the back of the store to the left. Cookies, cakes, and bakery goods clear to the back of the store to the left. Right cookies. Bread, however, is located on a separate counter. The bread counter is the right front corner. Way up at the front of the store to the right is the bread counter. Right, bread. Next, canned fruit is along the middle aisle on the left hand side. Again, from the X position, canned fruit is along the middle aisle on the left hand side. Right, canned fruit. And canned vegetables. Are along the middle aisle on the right side. Canned vegetables are along the middle aisle on the right side. Right, canned vegetables. Now, drugs are on counter sixteen, on the right hand aisle from the middle. Drugs are on counter sixteen, on the right hand aisle from the middle. Right. Drugs, and just across from them are the frozen food. Right, frozen food. Next, soap and cleaners are on counter thirteen, on the left hand aisle from the middle. Soaps and cleaners are on counter thirteen, on the left hand aisle from the middle. Right. Soap and cleaners, and just across from them are paper products, right? Paper products. Coffee and tea are found on the last aisle on the right, across from the produce, right? Coffee and tea. Soft drinks are found on the last aisle on the left, across from the meat, right? Soft drinks. Last, dishes on the counter by the door. Dishes on the counter by the door. Right, dishes and utensils. Module five, unit two, activity seven, task seven. Shopping district. Look at the map. From top to bottom, we find First Avenue, Second Avenue. And Third Avenue. From left to right, on the far left, we have Lincoln Street. In the middle, we have Main Street, and to the right, Washington Street. Now, find the park. Put your finger on the park. We'll begin from this location. Locate the bakery. The bakery is in the second block up on Washington Street. It is in the second block up on Washington Street. It is the third building from the corner of Second and Washington. Let me repeat: the bakery is in the second block up on Washington Street. It is the third building from the corner of Second and Washington. Right bakery on building sixteen. Right bakery on building sixteen. Now find the bank. The bank is on the corner of Second and Main. The bank is on the corner of Second and Main. It is the left-hand building on the north. The bank is on the corner of Second and Main. It is the left-hand building 
on the north. Right? Bang. Now let's locate the bookstore. The bookstore is on First Avenue between Maine and Washington. The bookstore is the large building on First Avenue between Maine and Washington. Right? Bookstore. Next, look at the camera shop. The camera shop is all the way up Main Street to the corner of Main and First. All the way up Main Street to the corner of Main and First. It's on the left hand corner, right? Camera shop. Next, let's look at the drugstore. It's on the corner of Third and Main. The drugstore is on the corner of the third and main, on right hand side, the right hand side of the street, right drugstore. Now let's locate the gift shop. It is next to the bakery. The gift shop is next door to the bakery, right gift shop. Let's find the high school. The high school is the largest building on 2nd, between Wayne and Washington, on the south side of the street. The high school is the largest building on 2nd, between Maine and Washington. Right, high school. The library is the largest building on 3rd, between Lincoln and Maine. The library is the largest building on 3rd, between Lincoln and Maine. Right, library. Bisa kan sambung kan? <coughs> the men's store is between the bank and the camera shop on Main Street. It's in the middle of the block. The men's store is between the bank and the camera shop on Main Street. It's in the middle of the block Right, main store. The parking lot is on the far side of the library on 2nd Avenue. The parking lot is on the far side of the library on 2nd Avenue. Right, parking lot. The record shop is across from the bank on the right hand corner of 2nd and Main. The record shop is across from the bank on the right hand corner of 2nd and Main. Right, record shop. Sporting goods. The sporting goods shop is on the corner of 2nd and Lincoln. The sporting goods shop is on the corner of 2nd and Lincoln. Right, sporting goods. The theater is on Main, in the middle of the block between 2nd and 1st. Right? Theater. The women's shop is on the corner of Lincoln and First. The women's shop is on the corner of Lincoln and First. Right? Women's shop. The YMCA is on Lincoln between 2nd and 1st Avenue. The YMCA is on Lincoln between 2nd and 1st. In the middle of the block, right, YMCA. And last, the YWCA is across from the high school on the corner of 2nd and Washington. The YWCA is across from the high school on the corner of 2nd and Washington. Right, YWCA. Module 5, Unit 2, Activity 8, Task 8, Shop and Services. Now let's look at the map. From top to bottom, we find 1st Avenue, 2nd Avenue, and 3rd Avenue. Looking from left to right, we have Adams Street on the left, Jefferson Street in the middle, and Lincoln Street to the right. Now find the intersection of Jefferson and 2nd. The intersection of Jefferson and 2nd. 
Notice the two parts located diagonally across the intersection from each other, Children's Park and City Park. Now let's locate some buildings. The dime store is on second, right beside the Children's Park. The dime store is on Second Avenue, right beside the Children's Park. Right dime store on Building Number One. Next, the fire department is on the corner of Third and Adams. Fire department is on the corner of Third and Adams. Right fire department. Now let's find the florist. The florist is on Jefferson Street, in the middle of the block between Second and First. The florist is on Jefferson Street. In the middle of the block between Second Avenue and Third Avenue, right florist. Next, the furniture store. The furniture store is the large building which takes up the entire block on Jefferson between Second and First. The furniture store is the large building which takes up the whole block on Jefferson between Second and. And first, on the right-hand side of the street, right furniture store. The grocery is one street over to the left from the furniture store on Adams between Second and First. The grocery is one street over from the furniture store on Adams between Second and First Avenues. Right grocery store. The hardware store is on the right of the city park on Second Avenue. The hardware store is on the right of the city park on Second Avenue. Right hardware store. The hotel is the largest building on the corner of Second and Lincoln. The hotel is the largest building on the corner of Second and Lincoln. Right hotel. The laundry is on the corner of Second Avenue. The laundry is on the corner of Second Avenue and Adams, on the south side of the street. Right laundry. The medical building is on the corner of Jefferson and First. The medical building is on the corner of Jefferson and First, on the left-hand side of the street. Right medical building. The paint store is on Third, in the middle of the block between Jefferson and Lincoln. The paint store is on Third, in the middle of the block between Jefferson and Lincoln. Right paint store. The police department is on the southwest corner, southwest corner of the intersection between Second and Jefferson. The police department. Is on the southwest corner of the intersection between Second and Jefferson, right? Police department. The post office is just north of the hotel. The post office is just north of the hotel, right? Post office. The restaurant is next to the fire department on Third. The restaurant. Is next to the fire department on Third Avenue, right? Restaurant. The Salvation Army is across from the hotel on the corner of Second and Lincoln. The Salvation Army is across from the hotel on the corner of Second and Lincoln. Right, Salvation Army. The shoe repair is beside the paint store on Third and Lincoln. Shoe repair is beside the paint store on Third and Lincoln. Right, shoe repair. And last, Western Union is across the street from the restaurant. Western Union is across the street from the restaurant on the corner of Third and Jefferson, on the right-hand side of the street. Right, Western Union. Do the formative test, Module Five, formative test two. Moving in. 
Hmm. It's not a bad size room, is it? Oh, it's great. Oh, and look at that fireplace. Oh, we can have the two chairs right in front of the fireplace there, in the middle of the room, and toast our feet. The first thing we ought to do is just decide where the bed's going. Oh well. So. What about right here next to the door? Yes. Shut up behind the door as you come in. Yes, that's a good idea. Just as you came in. Just in that corner there. Yes. Well, now let's think. What else? What else is there? Hmm. Well, that's that huge wardrobe of yours. Hmm. That's got to go somewhere. What about over here? You know, across from the fireplace there, because then, in that little corner where it, uh, where the wall goes back. Look over there. Mm-hmm. That's due, wouldn't it? Okay. Well, we'll put the wardrobe there then. Yes. Okay. So the wardrobe's opposite the fireplace. Um. Okay. What about your desk? Um. Uh, Where are you going to put that? Uh, I need lots of light, so I think in that far corner, in between the two windows. Okay. Oh, I see. In the corner there. Yes. Yes. Um. Yes, that would be good. So the desk goes there. So you would have your chair with your back to the fireplace. Yes. Yes, that will be all right. Yes, and there's. Yes. A chest of drawers. Oh, that will be nice in between the two windows there, right in the middle. Yes. It really. Come on, I know you are going to like it. Okay. Come on, let's show it over there. I mean. I bet I. I knew you'd ask me to move it. Come on, let's go. Okay, let's then. All right. Nearly there. Let's go it. God, what on earth have you got in there? Well, there's nothing much in there. I emptied it, most of it out. Oh God, my back hurts. There. Wait a minute. Let me stand back and have a look. Yes, it's not bad. Sick out of it. No, it's fine. Okay. What about the TV? Where are we going to put that? Uh, it's really got to go in the opposite side corner, hasn't it? Mm hmm. Opposite the desk. That is. Oh, you mean in the corner between the windows and fireplace? Yes. Yes. And then the stereo, uh, the amplifier underneath the television, and then the two speakers, one on either side of the fireplace. Yes, that would be good. Um. Well, lovely. So it will all fit in beautifully. Yes. What else? What else have you got? It's there. There's the bookcase, isn't there? Hmm. Oh Lord, where will we put that? Well, as you come in the door, um, immediately on the left-hand side. Oh, along that wall there, you mean? Because that's there's just about enough space there. There's about two feet, so it shouldn't stick out too much. No. Yes, it is not very wide, is it? So you come in the door. Yes. And then the bookcase is right there on the left. Yes. There is a long way from your desk, though. Well, exercise will do me good, won't it? Or table lamp. Well, we can just put that there. On the chest of drawers. Yes. When it's. Hmm. Yes, that would be nice. And no matter who wants to use it, you know. Yes.
Oh, this is going to be lovely. When are we going to get it all in now? Uh, no, not now. Let's just go to the kitchen and um uh, sort it out and have a cup of tea. Eh? Oh, <laughs> good. Right. Yes, I haven't seen the kitchen. Come on. Come on then. Let's go. Module five, unit three. Understanding sequences of procedure. Module five, unit three, activity nine, task nine point one. Learning a sport, part one. Good. Now, then, uh, lift the club backwards away from the ball. Mm hmm. That's it. Keeping that left arm straight. Mm, it's not easy. Till you get to the top of the swing. Yes. Good. Now the very important thing, you must keep your head down all the time. Down? Yes. Keep looking at the ball. Oh, but I'm looking at the club. No, you must look at the ball. That's it. Right. Now. It's not a very natural position, is it? Well, now swing down. Yes. That's it. Swing down and through. Mm-hmm. Keeping that left arm straight. Yes. And even when you, even after you've hit the ball, you must keep that head looking at where the ball was. Yes. It doesn't seem right to me. Doing really well. That's okay. It's not easy, is it? And after you've hit the ball, keep looking at where the ball was. Mm -hmm. But make sure you throw that club towards the hole. That's not going to be difficult at all. I've almost let go several times. You mustn't let go. I mean... You must just point the club towards the hole. Yes, that's why I'm looking in that direction so I can check where it's gone. Hasn't gone very far actually. Good, you'll be really good. Module 5, Unit 3, Activity 9, Task 9.2 Learning a Sport, Part 2 Am I standing in the right position? Well, you've got to bend your knees a bit more and thrust your hands back. So when you go into the water, you make your head follow. Uh, go straight in and your legs follow. Is this okay? Yes, that's just yes. That's just about right. And bend your knees a little bit more. This... Is this all right now? Yes, that's fine. Now put your hands back, behind your back, okay? Nice and straight. Yes, that's it. And then make it now. Go on, go. Make your head go straight in and your um, legs follow. Module 5, Unit 3, Activity 9, Task 9.3 Learning Sport, Part 3 Leslie, I don't think it likes me. Oh, never mind, Jackie. Now relax. Now take a deep breath. All right, because it can sense if you're nervous. Okay. All right. Mm -hmm. Now you feeling okay? Yes. Jolly good. Now take your left hand. Mm-hmm. And get some hair on its neck. Mm. Get a good firm hold. Okay. Now, can you lift your left leg and put it in the stirrup? You put your foot in the stirrup. My left leg? Okay. Yes. Hang on tight with your left hand on... Mm -hmm. Onto the hair. Okay? Right. And put your left foot in the stirrup. Fine. So my toes are pointing forwards. 
No, your toes are facing towards his back end. Ah.、Uh? All right. Okay. Hmm. Okay. Right now, can you hop round? Uh、mm-hmm. huh. So that you're facing its middle. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. All right. And put your other hand on the back of the saddle. Fine. Okay. Feeling comfortable? Yes. Okay. Now you've got to take a big jump, and you've got to swing your leg over the back, but don't kick it, because it'll be frightened. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Uh、mm-hmm. huh. Okay. It'll be frightened. Okay. Here we go. Module Five, Unit Three, Activity Ten, Task Ten, First Eight. As any parent will tell you, small cuts and minor grazes are unavoidable among small children. Such cuts and grazes will usually need little or no treatment. The bleeding will clean the wound naturally, and it should stop within a few minutes as the blood clots and dries. More serious cuts may need to be gently cleaned with soft cotton and warm water. They should then be dressed with a clean cotton bandage. Follow this simple checklist of questions. Ask yourself each of these questions in order to make sure you treat cuts and grazes properly. First, is the cut on the face? If so, call a doctor as soon as possible, especially if the eye is injured. Second, is the cut bleeding badly? If it is, put a clean piece of cotton wool over it and press down firmly for about five minutes. Thirdly, ask yourself if the cut is still bleeding badly. If it is. Dress it with a clean cotton bandage and call a doctor as soon as possible. Fourthly, is the cut a deep one, and is it wide open? If it is, clean the cut gently with clean cotton wool and a little warm water. Then hold it closed with an adhesive dressing. Fifth question: Was the cut made by a nail or a long? Sharp piece of wood. If it was, there may be some dirt in the cut. Let it bleed for a while to clean itself. Then clean it with cotton wool and warm water and dress it with a clean cotton bandage. Finally, don't forget that young children can become very easily upset or shocked by a cut, especially if it is a serious one. Try to keep them calm and quiet. Don't give them anything to drink, but keep their lips wet with a little water. Module five, unit three, activity eleven, task eleven. Dial a recipe. Chilled paprika chicken, part one. Hello, I'm Valerie, and here's our special telephone recipe for today. It's chilled paprika chicken, and it will take no more than an hour to prepare and cook. I hope you've got a pencil and paper ready because I'm going to give you the ingredients. You will need one and a half kilos of cooked chicken, skinned, three hundred milliliters of fresh mayonnaise. One hundred and fifty milliliters of sour cream, one tablespoonful of paprika, two tablespoonfuls of tomato puree, skinned and chopped, a little salt, and some freshly ground black pepper. Module five, unit three, activity eleven, task eleven. Dial a recipe. Chilled paprika chicken, part two. So that's one kilo of cooked and skinned chicken, three hundred milliliters of mayonnaise, three hundred milliliters of sour cream, a teaspoonful of paprika, two tablespoonfuls of tomato puree, half a tablespoonful of caster sugar. Four skin and chopped tomatoes, salt, and black pepper. Module five, unit three, activity eleven, task eleven. Dial a recipe. 
Chilled Paprika Chicken Part 3 To make chilled paprika chicken, you should first of all remove all the bones from the chicken. Then, cut the chicken into neat, bit-sized cubes. Next, mix the mayonnaise together with the sour cream, the paprika, the tomato puree, sugar, chopped tomatoes, and the salt and pepper. All the other ingredients, then, with the thoroughly mixed, add the chicken pieces. Now, stir in the chicken gently so that it's completely covered in the sauce. Finally, put your paprika chicken into a serving dish or bowl. Cover it and put in the fridge to chill for at least half an hour. Chilled paprika chicken is delicious served with a fresh green salad. Module 5, Unit 3, Activity 11, Task 11 Dial a Recipe Chilled Paprika Chicken, Part 4 a green salad is easy to make, and it needn't be boring. Take half a lettuce, half a bunch of watercress, a quarter of a cucumber, a green pepper, a few spring onions, and about 120 milliliters of French dressing. Core the pepper and take out all the seeds, then Basically, just chop or slice everything. Put it in a bowl. Pour on the French dressing and toss the salad in the dressing and it's ready to eat. You can make it much more interesting if you add thinly sliced hard-boiled eggs, a little fresh lemon juice and lots of nuts and thin slices of avocado pear. If you do put in nuts in your salad, put them in just before you eat. Do the formative test. Module 5, formative test 3. How to make change to a microcomputer. I'm going to show you how to change this microcomputer so that it can use what we call floppy disk, not just cassette to store programs. Now the first thing you do is take the cover off the computer by undoing these four screws here. Okay? Can you all see them? Good. Now, to save time, I've taken the cover off another computer here so that we can get on with the work. Now, the work involves putting some chips into place and changing around a couple of bits of wire called links. Not difficult actually, but you have to be careful or you might break something. First we take out now, this chip here called Wiseword and move it one place to the right. There. That came out easily enough. And it goes in there. Now that leaves a space free for this chip called DFS which goes where the Wiseword one was. Push it gently like that. Oops, never mind, it'll be all right. There. Now, you see we've got four other chips to put into the right place. And they've got to be the right way round, by the way. First, take the chips labeled and put it in this position on the left. That's the far left, like that. Check. It's in the right way round, and that goes for all the chips. Otherwise, you're in trouble. The second of these four chips is leveled, and it goes next to the one we've just put in, on the right of it. Just there. Gently does it, eh? Yes. Well, that leaves just two more. These two here. Now, one's very big. If the, and it goes here, right in the middle. Mm, cut it. That was a bit tricky. Now, for the last chip, the, this one goes at the front between the wise word and DFS chips here. And the IC79 and AT here. 
It's a bit stiff, this one. But got it. Now all that leaves is changing the wires, the TWD wires or links. The first is here at the back and we simply pull it out and turn it through 90 degrees like this and push it back. The other is here at the front and you do the same with that one, like so. Well, that's it. Just put the cover on and test it. If we take the other computer, which has already go its cover on, I'll show you how to link it to this drive. You just connect this cable from the disk drive to the disk drive. So just connect this cable from disk drive to disk drive socket under the machine and switch on like that. Oh, mm, it should be working. I wonder what's wrong. It generally works first time. This is the end of audio module 5, listening 3, PBIS 4222.